We'll be discussing in several, several parts the complex nature of feather damaging behavior. Now we're making a very strong importance here that we're not referring to this condition as feather plucking because we now know that there are several different types of feather damaging behaviors and regrettably many caretakers whom their bird is suffering from one of these conditions tend to put them all into the same package associated with boredom. Uh, many people are actually very embarrassed about the condition, ashamed, fearful that people will be judging them as less than uh, perfect caretakers. Uh, in general, the community doesn't ban or uh, feel any kind of compassion for bald men, but uh, regrettably for a parrot, it usually seems to be reflecting uh, a less than optimal lifestyle and neglect. And so, uh, regrettably, uh, this has led to a lot of criticism in the avian community and we would like to shed some light on some of the uh, commonly known uh, contributors to feather damaging behaviors. Since it was for years associated with boredom, Almost exclusively, many caretakers still today are tempted to uh, consult with an avian behaviorist. Instead of actually, uh, what would be best for the individual is that the bird uh, have a full medical exam in order to eliminate any possible health issues that could be tr triggering or contributing to the feather damaging behavior. Now, if Plume here, our captive bred uh, seven month old fledgling, would start to engage in any type of feather damaging behavior, Obviously, we would be very concerned about it, but one thing is for sure is we already know the history of this bird. We've been following his every moves, his weight gains, his uh, behavior, his performance, his agility. We know exactly with whom he was flocked, how he was educated, how he was socialized with the flock mentors, with caretakers as well. And so there would be little information that we don't have access to. Now, the other thing, too, that would be going on in Harry if this bird would start to feather damage is we know exactly what kind of nutrition he's been receiving. He has only and strictly been fed a high-performance uh, Tropican hand-feeding formula and weaning granules for the past seven months. And now he's becoming a, a, a young juvenile soon, and so he's now been switched onto a lifetime formula. So that is a huge part of the mystery that we also are able to assess completely. Additional to also having followed his nutrition and growth uh, very strictly, we also know that the quality of the feathers uh, that first emerged from his body as a young fledgling were optimal. And so there uh, is, have been no stress bars that could potentially contribute to feather damaging behavior, especially when these young fledglings reach a juvenile age. Now the reason why we're saying this with a lot of confidence is we've had the experience over the years of one or two individuals that had a slower crop during a peak phase of feather development and these birds regrettably at seven eight, eight months of age started to remove these damaged feathers from their bodies because instinctively they know that they would not be able to fly and uh, govern themselves appropriately uh, during flight if they are uh, unfortunately uh, full of stress bars and the feathers are not as strong as they should be. Now the other thing that's very important as well when we're doing nutritional research is we also look at the uh, strength of the barbules within uh, the feathers as well. So without having anything to do with stress bars, the integrity of the feather and the structure of it and the strength of it is very important as well in order to ensure that the bird will not want to remove a damaged feather. I briefly mentioned the social skills that this bird uh, was raised with uh, early on, of course, uh, being also raised with other clutch mates uh, and also being fed by the parents for a certain period of time. Uh, this all contributed to a very important preening education. And uh, birds start to preen at a very, very young age when they're actually not even able to perch yet and all their feathers are not even half emerged uh, amongst themselves when they're in a clutch. And so, for sure, this bird was in a clutch of three birds. And so his uh, uh, clutch mates also participated in this pruning activity way before they were actually able to stand up on a perch and do it on their own. Now, of course, he was then uh, stimulated every morning with uh, frequent misting sessions, whereby he was able to observe the older fledglings, 
uh, that are also his mentors, and he was able to learn from them uh, based on what he was seeing, that this was part of a normal day's activity. And so this preening activity and education is fundamental to any young bird that is growing up to be a healthy individual. Since we've been uh, regularly uh, monitoring the weight of uh, this juvenile, uh, it's also very important to stress the fact that uh, feather damaging behavior is often um, associated with weight gain. And so if this bird would start to accumulate significant amount of body fat around his abdomen or other parts of his body, then definitely this could be a contributor to future feather damaging behavior. And this is information that needs to be noted down. Uh, usually this is something that will be evaluated more precisely by your avian veterinarian as we can see uh, under the skin of most citizens the accumulation of fat deposits. But of course you need a very well trained eye in order to be able to do that. And of course uh, you need to have the medical experience to be able to evaluate the different types and degrees of obesity. Now there are other numerous factors that also need to be considered and we'll try and, and talk about all the different categories uh, one by one but just right now observing uh, our young fledgling once again I definitely am able to assess that the health of the feet are uh, optimal and so he's not suffering from uh, pododermatitis which would be quite scandalous at this age if he was but uh, many of the birds uh, regrettably that uh, suffer from feather damaging behavior also suffer from other ailments that prevent them from being able to have dexterity and agility in order to be able to properly preen themselves and whether this is wounds on the feet or arthritis or inadequate purchase or any other debilitating uh, health uh, condition this definitely needs to be assessed and this is why it is so fundamentally important that this whole feather damaging condition be assessed with the help of your avian veterinarian. Several other medical conditions can also be the cause and especially the onset of uh, the initial feather damaging behavior or the prolonged chronic behavior and such of these are, are endless but th there's very popular ones that come to mind quite readily such as the giardia which is a parasite that gets ingested uh, and, and sometimes is seen in uh, countries that have warmer climates. Uh, this can definitely be a contributor to the feather damaging behavior. Uh, chronic uh, low levels of zinc intoxication if your bird was housed for numerous years in cages that were not safe uh, as far as uh, metal toxicity uh, can definitely be a large contributor to this as well. Uh, there's also several conditions affecting the liver and the kidney and uh, Cushing's disease that can also be seen and identified through blood work, x-rays and other diagnostic tools by your avian veterinarian. Parasites are also res responsible for some of the feather damaging behaviors and, and these can be feather mites and they can also be feather lice and usually uh, th these are more present on smaller bird species such as uh, finches but uh, they can also be found on parrots and these are sometimes brought in through the environment or uh, regrettably uh, they have been transmitted by other birds. The birth endocrine system and all of the thyroids or parathyroids and other glands can also be responsible if they are malfunctioning for some of the inflammation reactions and triggers for feather damaging behavior. And so it is important for birds that are suffering from this disease to go through uh, a blood or hematological profile in order to be able to assess the functioning of these organs. Regrettably, uh, some individuals go through reoccurring feather cysts, and these can be associated with um, nutrition, of course, uh, but there can also be a genetic predisposition to some of these feather cysts in some of the canary species that we see, 
Or then again, too, we can also see a genetic predisposition to tumors, uh, such as in the budgerigar. Uh, other birds that have a pruning gland can also suffer from the impaction of this pruning gland. Most of the time, these, uh, this condition is resultant of a lack of vitamin A, and so it is uh, corrected easily with a nutritional revision. But it should nonetheless be examined by a veterinarian in order to ensure that it's not simply a simple cause such as this one that can be quickly uh, corrected. Sometimes a veterinarian may require to perform an additional biopsy of the uh, feather uh, follicle or the skin surrounding in order to be able to assess the uh, presence of inflammatory cells. And so this is uh, something that is uh, definitely very useful for your veterinarian in order to be able to guide you and, and your bird to be able to correct the situation, especially if it is a medical one. What becomes a little bit more challenging is trying to evaluate which one came first if there is an inflammatory response. And so this is always something that is challenging for everybody that's trying to brainstorm and troubleshoot a feather condition. Uh, but it is one nonetheless that requires a skilled uh, team of experts and often uh, diagnostic tools that can be quite invasive uh, depending on the amount of time required for anesthesia. But if this has become your last resort and you have explored all of the other possibilities uh, in the bird's environment or behavior that could be contributing to this uh, damaging condition, then it should be taken uh, definitely with a lot of seriousness and you should be perhaps considering to do these added diagnostics. Now, of course, feather hygiene has a lot to do with the feather damaging behavior. And if the birds are not able to mist or bathe uh, frequently in their environment, especially on a daily basis, for some of us that live in colder climates, we are using uh, electrical heating and wood stoves, and so you can have uh, potential toxicities in the air that are, can be harmful to the bird. But even if they're not harmful to the bird's health, they can still leave deposits on the bird's feathers. Uh, the electrical heating will cause the bird to have dry skin. And of course, to uh, provide a, a more humid environment, it is absolutely essential to either have a humidifier in the bird room or to be able to offer regular misting for your bird. Now, if you are uh, living in uh, a part of the world that the water quality is not exceptional, that can also be a contributor to your bird's feather damaging behavior. So this is something that you need to assess with your avian veterinarian to ensure that the bird is being misted with very healthy water and pure water. But the birds also put onto their feathers when they're preening is very important. And if this is a sugary fruit, or if this is oil coming from the oily seeds that they have in their diet, then this will definitely affect the quality of the feather that has emerged. And usually what will result from this is you will have a bacterial or fungal infection that will grow onto the feather, and this will cause the irritation and the natural instinctive desire to remove the feather. Now, what a lot of people also uh, fail to tell uh, their technician when they're being questioned, especially when someone's trying to figure out what is the cause of feather damaging behavior, is the honest truth about whether or not these birds are exposed to cigarette smoke. And if a, a caretaker is reluctant to say that it is, and perhaps he's feeling that he's not contributing to the feather damaging behavior because he's not smoking in the house, well, this can be as damaging if the cigarette nicotine is found on the person's hands, and then this caretaker actually participates in any pruning activity with their bird. So uh, for sure, without a doubt, the uh, cigarette and nicotine deposits onto your bird's feather uh, is definitely quite a huge factor to, con to consider. Now, additional to that, if you're a healthy caretaker and you're not smoking, well, definitely you could be cooking with oils that will regrettably also leave a deposit or a film onto the bird's feather, such as the olive oils, anything that basically you would see that in your kitchen is leaving a deposit onto the uh, stove fan would have the same consequences on your bird's feather. And so the importance of uh, early on engaging in very healthy and long misting activities with your bird with good water uh, is definitely important to ensure that your bird's feathers are groomed and remain hygienic. Other than um, oils that leave a deposit on the bird's uh, feathers and toxins such as cigarette smoke, we also need to consider what we put on our bodies, especially if the bird comes into contact with us closely. 
and uh, some people use the uh, aftershaves or the colognes and some people use the hand creams that maybe have um, reactions for our birds. And so these need to be assessed and we need to be truthful and write everything down that potentially comes into contact with our birds, whether in direct contact or through the environment. Caretakers are convinced that their birds' reactions and feather damaging behavior uh, is a seasonal one. And so this is really important for you as a caretaker to always uh, note down uh, when the onsets begin and when the behaviors change. Now often it can be attributed to a seasonal change. Seasonal can also mean hormonal. And hormonal is a huge cause of feather damaging behavior. And so these things need to be written down with as much detail as possible and, and accuracy. And we have to, once again, leave the emotions out and stick to the facts and ensure that we're writing as much information in our mind and body chart and our, our parrot profile uh, file keeper so that we can help uh, the veterinarian team assess properly and as less invasive as possible what could be the potential contributors to the onset of the feather damaging behaviors. Now, of course, after a healthy mist, it's always beneficial to add some kind of basking opportunity, as this can also lead to a healthier preening activity and definitely more comforting for the bird. Um, what I wanted to mention now is the importance of considering the hormones as a potential uh, trigger to some of the feather damaging behavior that we regrettably see with our companion birds. Hormones are not always looked at as a possible cause because most of the time our companion birds are companion birds and therefore we fail to recognize the fact that they have matured and they're probably entering now older juvenile age and they're starting to have hormones that are causing a lot of confusing uh, reactions in their body and of course for their behavior so they're a little bit like our adolescents and so usually when you have the original peak of hormones at a late juvenile age we'll often see with a female uh, perhaps that is not set up in a healthy environment for breeding uh, a little bit of feather damaging behavior and this would be more localized uh, around the top of the hips and uh, perhaps a part of the crop region and the abdomen. Uh, this is not absolute that it will react this way and very rarely do we have birds in our care uh, as part of our flock to, uh, engage in feather damaging behavior uh, when they are starting to breed. But over the years we have had uh, a few orange wing Amazons of second generation uh, females actually engage in this behavior and that's when we knew that the onset of the breeding season would start shortly. Now it is important to mention that without, uh, w without neglecting the fact that there has been uh, documentation relating to the potential genetic predisposition of the orange wing Amazons to feather damaging behavior, we know for a fact that some of these individuals are a little bit too uh, overweight and have a little bit of fat accumulation on their abdomen. So sometimes you have more than one condition that could potentially be the cause of the feather damaging behavior. Now we've highlighted a few of the medical conditions that can contribute to the onset of feather damaging behavior, but very importantly we need to discuss uh, the importance of having your avian veterinarian perform tests to ensure that your birds are not suffering from viral diseases that can also be a contributor to feather damaging behavior. In the past, the most common virus that was associated to uh, feather damaging behavior was called parrot beak and feather disease. And uh, in this day and age, uh, this disease is not as occurring. Uh, it used to be quite dramatical when birds were imported in large quantities and the onset of this disease would be quite sporadic and the damage would be considerable. But uh, this is not one that we see as much now. What we see in this day and age more and more now are birds that are suffering from feather damaging behavior because they have uh, a, a condition called uh, Bornavirus or proventricular dilatation disease. And this will affect the structure of the feather and will, without a doubt, for certain species, uh, cause feather damaging behavior as well. We've been discussing 
discussing the several of the potential contributors to feather damaging behaviors for a while now with only one of our fledglings here on, on the table. But in many households, we know that uh, there is probably a flock that also lives with this bird. And so if this is the situation, then you must ensure that you know who's actually doing the feather uh, damaging behavior. Is it the bird doing it onto himself or is it another flock mate uh, contributing to this uh, damaging behavior? Enriching the environment is very important, but also making sure that your bird lives in an environment that is not too stressful is also a huge consideration. And often we fail to recognize what could be potentially contributing to a very stressful environment. Uh, over the years, we've consulted with many, many caretakers that have regrettably failed to realize that either a snake also uh, housed in the same uh, room or a ferret close by or maybe a cat wandering near the cage or the window uh, during the day when the caretakers are at work um, are affecting this bird's ability to be comfortable and preen themselves and not feel like a prey. Making sure that we're offering as well a suitable uh, housing for the bird's uh, comfortable rest at night is also very important. And so for some species this may be a very very small cage in a very quiet uh, space in your home and uh, for some, it may be also equipped with a night lamp so that we can uh, avoid the birds trashing at night, especially if people will be roaming around the house at uh, different hours throughout the night. It's always important to make sure that the birds are not startled. So ideally, use those cameras and spy on your bird. Spy on him during the day, during the night, try and figure out when he's the most comfortable, what is triggering him to be awakened abruptly, or what is triggering him to be stressful in his environment. Undoubtedly, nutrition will definitely have to be assessed whenever feather damaging behaviors occur. Uh, for many caretakers, this can be a difficult thing to assess because our birds uh, might be fed numerous things. And so it's, it's quite difficult for us to uh, cert ensure that we know exactly how much fat or how much protein, how much vitamins the birds are actually ingesting. Now, once again, uh, not because we're offering a certain diet that the birds are actually ingesting that whole diet as well. Um, if birds have medical conditions, uh, that could be um, affecting the assimilation of certain vitamins, then this will also uh, cause a little bit more complication when we're trying to assess nutritional um, health of the bird. Now, the most popular uh, vitamins that are usually deficient when we have feather damaging behaviors are vitamin A, D, and E. And these usually work hand in hand together. Now, of course, uh, we've discussed in other podcasts the importance of assessing vitamin assimilation through the inspection of the coanal papillae, uh, the integrity of the feet, uh, the cloaca, whether or not it averts. Of course, your veterinarian would be doing this. But it's also uh, very important to ensure that additional to having these proper nutrients that the bird actually has uh, direct access once in a while to either a full spectrum lighting for the benefits of vitamin D or to natural sunshine. Uh, additional to the importance of having a fresh air to breathe from, uh, all of these factors will definitely contribute to the nutritional and environmental uh, health of this bird in order to prevent any further fe feather damaging behavior. What we also see as well, and this is usually uh, certified by the inspection of a damaged feather, is the lack of healthy structure that a, f that a feather might have if unfortunately it doesn't have the proper building blocks, which is the amino acids that are often lacking in a seed diet. And therefore it's important that these birds are supplemented accordingly in order to ensure that the structure of the bird's feather is healthy. Any produce that you're offering to your bird's diet, organic or otherwise, can have bacterial contaminations on them, or it could have been grown in soils that have toxins in them as well, such as we know uh, very high occurrence of soils contaminated with melamines. And so you must ensure that whatever you're offering your bird, you know the source of, and if you are uh, reluctant to use a certain product, then grow it yourself, and that way you can be more environmental and offer products that are fresh and in season, and definitely you're aware of where they've been grown. Many caretakers will react quite drastically when faced with feather damaging behavior, especially when it's the first time that they see their birds are engaging in it. And normally what happens is they're going to try to enrich the birds with so many different foods. Uh, we can definitely testify to the fact that our parrots have been eating only extruded diet uh, because we do longevity 
research on our food, not because we choose to offer only pellets. And despite the fact that we know that it is pretty boring to be eating the same morsel every day, even if it changes in shape and form, um, it, it's not causing any feather damaging behavior, the fact that the birds are eating a boring, day-to-day, -day redundant uh, same morsel. So we definitely know, based on actual research and observations that we've made on our flock, that this is not the only contributor. And so if you are tempted to offer now an assortment of foods in order to prevent boredom and to correct uh, the behavior, then you might be uh, falling now into another problem, which is too much sugar, uh, perhaps a too much soft food that then kicks up on the bird's perches and, and creates a very unhygienic environment that then the bird picks up his foot to preen his feathers with and uh, unfortunately it becomes a vicious circle of unhygienic uh, cross-contamination and bacterial and fungal growth. So you have to make sure that you're taking nutrition very seriously and before you correct anything make sure that your veterinarian assesses the bird's health to confirm whether or not this bird is lacking nutritionally and then if you do want to stimulate this bird with uh, preening toys or perhaps more enrichment and what I would recommend definitely is uh, allow this bird to engage in more visually uh, enriching activities such as watching polyvisions and other birds foraging so that he will see that in the wild birds do not engage in this feather damaging behavior. Of course it is very avant-garde right now and most of us as caretakers are trying to participate and create fun foraging challenges for birds because we know that it has and provides uh, numerous health benefits and psychological benefits. Now without a doubt birds in the wild spend most of their waking hours looking for food and if birds are regrettably offered their food in a very easy to access dish at all times then definitely uh, all of the time that they would normally be uh, engaging in foraging activities in the wild might be spent doing another behavior which is feather damaging. Another reaction that many caretakers will have when they see uh, um, a bird starting to cause any feather damaging onto himself is a very reactive one, uh, usually with a vocal uh, scream and this will unfortunately uh, have uh, many times a positive reinforcement for the bird. And so what we're trying to do is uh, make sure that the bird understands that this is not a behavior we want them to do, but birds really like it when a uh, flock uh, members start to engage in loud vocal uh, discussions. And so we want to make sure to be very proactive instead of be very reactional. And what I mean by that is get out your camera, maybe place a hidden camera if you have access to one. Start to observe the times when your bird starts to engage in this activity. Note down anything that may have contributed to the onset of the feather damaging behavior. Conserve the feathers that are damaged. Uh, scan them if you want. Uh, put them in a little ziplock and bring them uh, with your bird, of course, to his veterinarian exam. The most information you'll have, uh, the better equipped your veterinarian will be to be able to help you diagnose uh, the condition and ensure that this condition doesn't deteriorate. Now, unfortunately, many times uh, we will have birds that will injure themselves and we're not aware of that, maybe at the tip of their wing or maybe birds will have slight wounds on the uh, breastbone because they've fallen, maybe because consequent to a bad uh, or an, an extensive uh, flight feather grooming and then the birds will start to feather damage around the wound. Now if you're not a caretaker that's able to observe uh, fully the body of your bird on a regular basis, this little trauma hidden under the feathers might be concealed for some time and when you start to notice that there's a problem, it has become now a feather damaging problem but originally it was actually a trauma. And so you have to be very very sure that you're able to assess everything in your bird's life and that you're able to uh, be as precise and as concise as possible when being asked uh, the bird's environment, his diet, everything about your bird's health that could potentially affect this onset of feather damaging behavior.